boys just wanna say that I'm going out Every time I'm rolling up into my spot I get so hyped up I think I'm going out I got one goal and that's gold If we ain't into fish then we're hitting the road I live the life of a fisherman that never gets old So welcome to the show Come on yo, we're going out Uh, you know, planning these things, uh, you always try to come up with ideas and concepts. And um, I had this idea for a shoot with Britt Myers, a friend of mine on the Bassmaster Elite Trail. Uh, Britt's a guy I've known for a lot of years. The interesting thing about Britt is he's an amazing angler, but he also owns a shop called CS Motorsports. Uh, we've been doing custom truck builds together for gosh, over 10 years. All right, so here at CS Motorsports, we've been in business for uh, going on 24 years. That's hard to believe. This business started when I was 19 years old. I had a passion for cars, and I basically took out a car title loan against my mom's car. I didn't have a car, it was worth $5,000 at the time. So a $5,000 car title loan got this business started. Um, it grew just little by little by little, and uh, now we currently employ approximately 23 people. And so I'm, I'm truly blessed. I get to do building cars at the highest level, and I get to fish you know, on the bass circuit at the highest level. This business has had a tremendous impact from the sport of bass fishing. And let me give you some examples. You know, we're in a little town called Gastonia, North Carolina, just right outside of Charlotte. And every single day here, we're dealing with professional anglers, whether it's Iconelli, Van Damme, Skeet Reese, or even I've got ang anglers in Texas, California, Michigan, all over the planet who do business with us because of our involvement with professional bass fishing. We became a, a, a hub to customize trucks um, from all over the country. And people call in, they have questions, whether it's adding custom wheels to their boat trailers or lift kits, tackle organization, you know, we build all kinds of stuff inside of beds and trucks to make their tackle accessible, um, just all kinds of things. I mean, we are truly blessed because this is a little store on the East Coast that has been hugely impacted by the sport of bass fishing. You know, this idea came to my mind and it really started to become perfect because it was a year where I had to get a new Toyota truck. Um, it was a year where I wanted to build a truck that stood out and was different. And it was also one where I wanted to fish with Britt. I've known Britt for over 10 years, but you know, when you travel with somebody and you're competing against them, a lot of times you don't get to fish with them. It's the really weird scenario. You know, you're around each other six, seven months out of the year, but you're competing against each other. You don't get a chance to fish together. So, you know, this idea was real easy. It came together. You know, the hard part, was the timing and when I laid out the calendar and looked at this we were going to have a really short window not only to shoot the show to shoot the fishing portion but also to build this truck um, you know that was the thing I was scared about sent Britt a text you know he definitely reassured me calmed me down a little bit and said that this is something we could get done so he called me about two months ago and says Britt I want to build this over the top, really awesome, super big, just awesome Tundra. So that's what we did. You know, the first thing is I got a truck shipped to Britt, a local Toyota dealership I work with here. We got him a new truck and it was a factory truck. The truck got shipped here to the shop. And then we kind of had this brainstorming session where we were trying to come up with what could we do to build a truck that's different and stands out from all the other trucks out there, especially on the Bass Tour. I mean, this is a fully functional uh, Bass tactical vehicle. It's got everything he needs for you know, his trip across the country, wherever he needs. You know, it was great because um, we really, from the beginning, started clicking on this concept of doing a build that was cleaner, that was taller and wider. Um, building a Toyota Tundra that was really going to stand out from a lot of the Toyotas out there on tour. Some custom red suspension, 12 inch lift kit, power folding step, equipped for his Hobie kayak system to go on the top. You know Ike, he might be fishing in a pond next week, fishing on the Great Lakes next, you know, the week after that. So this truck definitely is, is uh, capable of handling no matter what he puts in front of it. 
You know, getting here, um, I came in from a Bassmaster Classic practice down on Lake Hartwell. Practiced really, really hard all week. Four or five days on the water at Lake Hartwell, not fishing, just staring at a little graph. Uh, and then I had a short drive up here. But I gotta tell you, the two hour drive up here, man, I was so excited. I was so excited to actually fish, to get a chance to, to be on a boat casting a rod uh, get a chance to fish with Britt on his home lake, which is Lake Wiley. But man, I'm excited to see this truck build. Um, you know, leading up to it, I know they were real close to being finished. I knew it was going to be tight, but I don't, I don't know if I'm more excited to, to get out in the water and cast a line or to see this truck. You know, we decided to meet at the boat ramp at Lake Wiley, and man, I gotta tell you, it was cold. Uh, you know, it was in the high 20s. Both of us had on our boob suits, frost on the ground, and when we got to the ramp, we made a decision that we were gonna use Britt's boat. The great thing about it is, Britt also has a bass cat. Super comfortable in that boat. Um, with Britt knowing the lake like the back of his hand, it was a no-brainer. I decided to be a co-angler for the day. I was gonna be a rider, and I've got no problem with that. I love being in the passenger seat. So I grabbed about 12 rods, jumped in, and we were ready to go. fishing areas that are more what I call transitional areas. These are areas that are creek mouths a quarter of the way into a creek, not quite halfway back into a creek, and these were fish that are starting to come out to the main lake. And one of the key elements for sure is bait. Bait, bait, bait. Uh, he let me know, and I could immediately tell as we idled into this spot, looking for bait and looking for birds was a key part of the day. But, you know, Britt really made it clear that there's one bait that we're gonna be throwing that's gonna stand out during the day, and it's an A-rig. Alabama rig, umbrella rig, crab trap, whatever you wanna call it. Chandelier. And that made me excited. Immediately, you know, we're gonna start throwing the A-rig, um, and Britt pulls out his A-rig, and I look at it, and I'm like, what in the, what in the heck is that thing? An A-rig, to me, has five, maybe six wires. Britt's got one tied on that's got nine hooks on this thing, nine wires. It blows me away, it's incredible. I immediately take mine off. I said, Britt, throw me one of them things back here. I gotta use that thing. And I tie that thing on. It's a huge umbrella rig. You know, we're early into the day. We're probably five minutes into the day and I get my first hit of the day. And it, it throws me off a little. It's so early in the day, and I'm not used to throwing this thing, but I have something, poof, nail it, and it misses the bait. Great sign, but I'm a little disappointed. I've got nine hooks on this thing, and I can't get into a fish. Come on, man. About 10 minutes later. Look up. I got something. Oh, my God. It's a spot. Not a spot. Oh, it's a black. It's a black, bro. Wow, look at that. Look at, look at, how, look at how I got a hook. Now I got my cell phone. Look at that thing. Look at that. You can wait with that thing. I'd say it's about pound and quarter. Pound eight. Wow, look at that. It's cold, 
water temperatures in the 40s. Look at the old chandelier got him. One of those nine hooks got him. Maybe two. First fish of the day, yeah, yeah. I've been doing TV shows for about four or five years, but I can tell you, I look at my watch. When you catch one and you're 10 minutes into the day, that's usually a really, really good sign, or it's the kiss of death. Um, I'm hoping it's not the kiss of death. We go a little bit further up, and it starts to slow out a little bit. We're seeing some fish on the graph, but we're not catching them. And now my mind's thinking, oh my God, please don't let this be the kiss of death. And then we get to a really cool spot that is an area that I, I call the funnel. And it's an actual bridge mouth where the bank on either side tightens up. You've got some rip rap and some bridge pilings. And what that's doing is it's creating a funnel. The fish have to funnel through that area as they're migrating. The other thing that funnel area does is creates current. Um, if they're pulling a little bit of water, or even if they're not pulling water, there's a little bit of wind, wow. those pinch down areas oh. always create some current. Man, this is going to be a great spot to catch yeah, some fish. Yeah, it's definitely a five pounder if you lost it. You know, immediately we get there, and I think Britt hooks up with the next fish, and he's fighting it. He's got one. He swings it in. It's another two pounder. Throw it back in there, man. It's a spinner. Oh, whirly bird. <laughs> we got a spinner on. Yeah, there go. look at that. One of the bottom ones. I failed it, just tick, 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 and yeah. got it. Oh, this is good. Fish? Yes. The old crab trap. It's like magic. And in the next 20 to 40 minutes in the small bridge area, dude, we put a hurting to the fish. Look at that. <laughs> On that bottom one again. I mean, all those baits. And look which one he's hooked on. Wow, he come way out. You see how far out he came? Look at that. Wow. So cool. Old chandelier, all those baits looking like a school bait fish. Dude, it literally, it mesmerizes these fish into biting. And this cold water, doesn't Got matter. One. There's another one, right? Doubles, doubles. That looks like a good one. That's another good one. That's a good one. Cool right there. Look at that. Look at that. Nice. Don't doubles in the winter, cold water. Catching in school and that's incredible. I look over at Britt, he's hooked up. I cast out there, I'm hooked up. I think we've got doubles once or twice where we each have a fish hooked. Man, we're catching the snot out of them. You know, the only thing we're not seeing is a really big fish. But man, this is fun. This is fun to catch one to two and a half, two and three quarter pound fish on an A-rig. This is blowing me away. <laughs> I can't even get back in the water. <laughs> Get back in the water. Wow. This is amazing. This is so cool. I can't get put my uh, chandelier back in there quick enough. I'm so excited. Did you see him streaking Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, that last one came deeper, you know? Right there in a different. They get out wrong, they don't know what at one time, I got seen like a bunch of fish right there. That's a big one. Uh-oh. That feels like a different animal. I think. I don't know. He's, he's looping. That might not be a good sign. That's a good one. God, it's a good one. Fatty, dude. Fatty. <laughs> nice. They're getting fatter. <laughs> wow. Wow, look at that. The good news is I had him hooked three times. <laughs> yes. Dude, you were crawling out with Crawling. I was it. watching you. Crawling it. This is my home lake, but I did, I did like want to pick up some pointers today, you know what I'm saying? 
You know, there's a lot of different opinions on an A-Rig. Some people love it, some people don't care either way, some people hate it. But for me, this was exciting. You know, Britt's like, man, this is gonna be the game changer of the day, this is what they're hitting. I was excited because I don't get to fish this rig a lot. Living in South Jersey, everything's shallow, A-Rig doesn't work, it's not allowed on the Bassmaster Elite Trail. So I was stoked about possibly catching them on a technique I don't fish a lot. I'm gonna have 18 baits here in a second if they keep mating like that. Now the tail's messed up on this one, hold on. Ah, that should be right. God, no tail. tail got messed up again. Oh, that's a big one. Uh-oh. It felt like a good head shake. Eh, it's not that big. You know when you crossed up? Yeah. It feels bigger. But I had two or three bites right there. Hold on, Ray, I gotta catch that thing. Felt big. Still a nice little chunky bass. Yeah, that's a good one. Two pounder. Delaware River, we'd have this tournament won right now. And that's all we need. We need that quarter that we can to everything. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather. So stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass. Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. You know, one of my goals coming here, besides catching them on an A-Rig, is to try to catch a double. You know, every fisherman out there, you've got these little bucket list things. You've got things that you want to check off of your list. And I've caught doubles before. I've caught doubles on crankbaits. I've caught doubles on a topwater, on a jerkbait. But I've never caught a double on an A-Rig. I've heard guys are catching two, three. Britt told me a story of a tournament that him and his buddy fished where they caught a limit on, on one cast. Dude, that stuff, that stuff freaks me out. I've never done that before. So this was a real goal, you know? I look at my watch, we're only a couple hours in. We still probably got four, five, six hours of fishing. My goal today is to try to catch a double. You know, we're getting ready to leave this bridge oh, yeah, spot. We decide to make one last pass. There's one. And on this second oh, pass, gosh. I start really creeping this rig. Instead of fishing it fast, I start slowing yeah. it down. Almost starting to drag it like you would a Carolina rig. And I get this hit and I set the hook and it's a really different kind of feel. Got here. And my first thought is, dude, th that's the one, that's her. This is a big one. And as I'm fighting it, I look up and, and Britt's looking back and he knows this is a different kind of fight. And it's either going to be a really big one or... Two! Two! Yeah! Yeah! First time ever! First time ever! Look at that! Man, I wanted to do that so bad. Look at that. Bert, I never did that before. God, look at that. Dude, I, I kind of freaked out. You know, it's funny, because I look up and Bert's kind of like smirking, laughing at me. And they're little fish, they're not giant fish. But I accomplished my goal. Two fish on one cast on the A-Rig. Dude, I'm, I'm stoked, out of my mind. You know, the other interesting thing about this bait, this, this chandelier, this umbrella rig, is kind of looks like a jellyfish. We're catching these fish, and as you reel them in, dude, the, the A-Rig actually engulfs these fish, like a jellyfish surrounding these fish. Pretty unbelievable. Look at you. I dropped on them. Did you drop on the boat? Yeah. Ooh, it's a big one. Oh, I thought he was bigger than that. Nice. See, I can catch him on other things besides a chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> on a single. The old single rig. Eight less hooks and I still caught one. There she was. Oh, saw that. Oh yeah. Better. Oh, 
Wow, that's so cool. This water's man. actually clear for here. That's so cool. Just talk a little bit about this rig and why we, we were talking about it on the bridge, but I want you to talk about it again. Dude, this thing's it's totally phenomenal this time of the year. It's totally different. Guys could be throwing jerk baits, everything else. That's a big one. Look at this. That's a real big one. After you're done catching this one, we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> oh, he's foul hooked. Imagine that, foul hook with nine baits. Dude, there's guys fishing all around us not getting bites. We're throwing an A-rig and catching them. Why is this thing so good this time of the year? Dude, it triggers something in their brain. It, it, it makes them just go berserk. Um, I don't understand it, but I've seen it. When it first came out, I, I went to places. I grew up my whole life fishing here. I went to places where I thought I had known, you know, the best Rapala crankbaits or the, the best jigs or, or whatever. And I know these places as good or probably as good as anybody. Yeah. And uh, and I started throwing that bait around just because of the hype of it. And it was the most insane deal. But as crazy as this sounds, it taught me so much about bass fishing. Because we kind of get stuck in our ways. Like we, you know, I, I didn't know that a bait could make that big of a difference. All right. So, so now switching from a swim jig to a bladed jig, it's the cadence. It's something that bait really something trigger. And, yeah. and I'm telling you, when I when I first picked up this bait and I seen what happened, it really taught me a lot about bass fishing. So this is a seven pounder. Feels like an NC Vinzy one. Yeah, look at all them fish in there. It's incredible. There we go. Another bass. You know, we've already got an amazing show shot. I mean, we're two or three hours in the day. I bet you we've got 20 fish catches. The only thing we're missing is a big one. And, you know, I really feel like in all the shows I shoot, I love to have one magic fish catch, one big fish catch. A jig? Yes. There's one. That's you good in work? Maybe. Maybe. I don't want to horse some of these little hooks. Oh, nice. Nice size one, but. Man, it's like every point we go to, if we spend enough time. Wow. We spend enough time, we will get a bite. I just got pumped. Tell they're fat. See, that's a good one. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. 
Mm, the old crab trap. Biggin', biggin', I think. Maybe not. Maybe. Nope. Good one. Not a giant, though. Yeah. Ah! Look, he's got a chandelier over his head. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Britt makes a decision that in the last hour and a half of fishing, we're going to make a move and we're going to go down lake um, and we're going to look for the same elements. We're going to be fishing secondary points, creek mouths, looking for baits going to be key, but we're going to make a move and we're really going to try to catch a couple bigger fish to end this show. You know, we get down lake and we made a couple stops and we're not seeing the bait. Finally, we pull into an area. And Britt looks at his Lowrance and he starts to identify some bait fish. We make a stop and we start fishing that rig. I think we had one bump it, and we're not getting nothing. And I'm starting to look at my watch and I'm like, you know what? We don't get a big one. It's no big deal. We had an amazing day. I can't wait to see my truck. I'm gonna to get to see my truck in a little bit. No big deal if we don't catch a big one. I, I'm kinda, of, I don't wanna say giving up. I've got to catch fish and hope to God that this truck gets finished building while we're fishing, okay? And I didn't try to show it, I didn't think about it. Every now and again, I was sneaking down a text, you know, just real quick, trying to see what's going on. But I'm starting to get to the point where, That's look, we don't catch a big one, it's no big deal. That's a good one. There you go, nice fish. Close to three pounder. Yeah. That's a good one. She felt a lot bigger than that. That's a good one though. Wow, nice fish. We get to the side of this point and I see a dock. It's a really, it, it, you know, it's not an important dock. It's not giant. It's not this huge 50 foot dock with boats tied to it. It's kind of just a normal looking dock. And I watch Britt make a throw, really nice cast to the left side of this dock. And he starts that slow retrieve and he gets it just about to the end where that corner of that dock's at, and I see him bow up on one. And right away, I knew this was a different kind of fish. I looked at Britt's face, and he knew this was a different one. And we get it to the side of the boat, and there she goes. This is the one we've been looking for all day. Takes his time with that fish, and I get it. I actually get this fish for him, and I land it. And finally, finally, at the very end of the day, we got about 30 minutes left to fish. Britt catches that kicker fish we were looking for. A four and a half, a four and three quarter pound fish. Beautiful largemouth for Lake Wiley. Uh, man, hold that thing up. What a great way to end the day, catching a big one. On a dock, how about that? We make a decision to make one last stop. And you know, we look at our watch and we got like 10 minutes left to fish. And we're gonna, we're gonna release these fish. We're gonna do a little wrap up. Britt's like, you wanna make another move? We wanna send it. I'm like, nah, I'm like a diehard. I just saw Britt catch that big one. I'm like, let's make one last stop and then we'll release these fish. And let's go back to the shop and see this truck. We make the stop and probably third oh, or fourth cast oh, on the same little secondary biggest, point. Biggest, I forgot. Biggest, and this is biggest, another good fish. Yeah. And I fight it, fight it, fight it, get it to the boat. And I catch my biggest fish of the day, a three pound class fish. To me, that was a perfect exclamation point for the day. Um, I catch that thing. Britt actually catches another spot two casts later, but that's a great point of the day to end it. It's three o'clock. We hold them fish up, take a picture, let them swim. Um, but now it's the second half of this show. Man, awesome day. We, we caught the snot out of them on the chandelier, on the crab trap. Um, had a blast.
but dude, I'm ready. I gotta see this thing. Can you please take me to your shop so I can see this truck? Let's go. You ready? Let's go. Man, I'm stoked. I can't wait. Oh, let's release these fish too while we're here. All right. This is the second half of the magic of this show, which is now I'm gonna to get to go back and see this new truck, see this dream, see this build that we've created together. I wanna to see it become a reality. I'm gonna to get to watch it it's happen. It's like being in a toy store. You know, we get to the wow. shop, and I gotta tell you, it's a short drive. It's like a 30, 20, 30 minute drive to the shop. Wow. The best way I can describe it is being a kid again and coming down on Christmas morning, that excitement. For all you fish heads out there, it's like the first morning of a tournament. It's like when your boat number's called and the sun's rising and you got those butterflies to get to your first spot, you know, not knowing what's gonna happen. That's the feeling I had coming in the shop. What, what, what is this? It's a 30 inch wheel. You're kidding me. Ish had those on his Hummer. Oh That's what he had God. on his H2 one time. That's a massive wheel. Dude, <laughs> that is insane. Look at the size of that thing. Look at that. G -g 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 Giant rim. <laughs> you ready to go see this truck? All right, you ready? Let's go. All right. Should I blindfold? We walked yeah. through the shop and they took me back right, through the, through the okay. shop doors. No employees, special little visit. And it's like kind of like the holy grail when those doors open, you know? And you're, you're, you're walking through and you want to see it, but you don't at the same time. I rounded that corner and there it was. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> wow! That's a massive truck, isn't it? Wow! Did all you guys have a hand on this? Can I shake your hand real quick? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Brit. Dude, it's all these guys, man. Definitely. <laughs> wow. Dude, look at the look at the look at the center caps on the roof. <laughs> oh my god. That's insane. It's too nice to drive. It's totally insane. Oh my God. And I gotta tell you, in all the years that I've done TV and fishing and have done fishing shows and met people and had all these cool experiences happen in my life, this was a moment for me where I was speechless. I'm never speechless. I almost didn't know what to say. I was just like, my jaw was on the ground. I was just like, and I saw this beast of a truck that I gotta tell you, it was bigger, better, more beautiful than anything I've ever imagined. Um, it was so cool to see it. And then all of a sudden I looked to the right and there's Britt's crew, all his guys, his employees that make this happen, um, you know, lined up to watch this happen. And I, I saw it in their face. You know, they were proud of it. Just as I was proud to see it, I know Britt was proud to build this. I looked at these guys' faces and they were stoked about this build and how it came out. That was really cool. Gave them all a high five and made this lap of this truck. And man, I was blown away. I make that hot lap, Britt showing me all the features. And finally, I just gotta let it out. What the heck is this? Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. I all that energy, that excitement that was bottled up and I was so quiet, it all came out and I had to let out a little yell. Felt like I won the classic. I'm serious, it felt like that. Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. I, it's actually, it, it's, it's beyond belief. 
It's beyond belief. It really is. Alright, I gotta do it real quick. Now that's trick, right there. Now that's trick. Mom, I have spinners. <laughs> For me, the, the grand finale of the shoot, and what an awesome shoot it was. You know, a chance to get to build a dream truck with a good friend of mine at CS Motorsports. A chance to get to fish with a good friend of mine, Britt Myers, on his home lake. A chance to catch a lot of bass on a technique I don't use. All that is something I'll remember forever, but the grand finale for me of this show is getting in this truck for the first time, turning that key, and driving off, and driving home, and heading home. That first drive in my new truck. Man, this is a show I'll remember forever. Game's bigger than you, use a small fish in a big pond, but these sharks came to swim, even in your own school, you won't learn the things that we know, leave you lost trying to find yourself, Nemo, this game's bigger than you, use a small fish in a big pond, but these sharks came to swim, even in your own school, you won't learn the things that we know, leave you lost trying to find yourself, Nemo. For information on the product and gear used in the show, go to MikeIconelli.com and follow me on my social feeds, at Mike Iconelli. And if you want to help grow the sport of fishing, get kids involved. Go to theikefoundation.org to figure out information on how you could help get involved in getting kids fishing.